settling in at linebacker the way you thought he would or at the rate you thought he would? Yeah, I mean, um, very pleased with Sonny. You know, I think um, he's being put into a lot of different situations. Playing Sam, playing Will, he's played Mike. All of those uh, positions have their nuances to them, you know. And I know this, that uh, sometimes when you see him or any of our players um, not, you know, being off on a play or looking like they're out of position, I mean, that to me goes back to me and training and coaching, right? I mean, there are so many details to these things that any time a play goes wrong, and our players know this, I tell them, you know, all your bad plays are on me. All your good plays are on you. So when I look at a play, you know, I say, okay, he should have done this. But then I have to look at myself and you have to say, how many times was he in practice put into that position versus that play? I mean, that's how, you know, that's how you have to be accountable, I believe, as a coach because we have really good players and really good kids, and Sonny is one of them. <laughs> Meaning, you know, like they're good and they listen. So when you have that combination, then it goes back to coaching. So I would say that, you know, Sonny in particular, one of those guys, I mean, he's employing a, a, a myriad of different techniques, you know, playing kind of all three of those positions. And there's a lot of nuance to it. And we just got to, you know, we got to keep doing a, a better job coaching all the details. So third row over here, Andy Anderson. Yeah, uh, sticking with Sonny, you know, you had safety's transitional linebacker in the past, now from Rodriguez. Uh, in your experience, how long does it take for someone to nail down those nuances, like you said, and, and how long did it take with Malcolm? Maybe? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, Malcolm, who had a sack last night, I think, didn't he? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see it. I was watching video, but somebody texted me about it. <laughs> texted me about it. <clears throat> yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it's a good question, but, yeah, I mean, Malcolm, I think, was, you know, he was on his, the, the top of his game in, in year three. You know, I think Sonny and Malcolm are a little different. You can look at them and see that, but, you know, so, and plus at Ohio State, we don't have time for year three, you know? So Sonny's in an accelerated program. That's all I can say, you know? And it's just going to keep getting better. Yeah, Jim, what, the, what differences do you maybe notice between the Iowa offense that you saw at 22 and this Iowa offense? And just what kind of challenges does Caleb Johnson pose, especially? At well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just doing a great job of creating seams for him, for him and he's fantastic back, you know, downhill break tackle. So, you know, I just see, uh, you know, that they're uh, creating formations and ways to make it hard on the defense to maintain your proper position. And then, you know, they get they get guys out of whack formationally, and then he's able to crease it. We'll go right down here in the aisle, Bill Hannes. Jim, <clears throat> when you guys decide to play three linebackers, is it – Automatic, they're in 12 personnel. We're playing three linebackers. Is there more nuance to it? And then how, I guess, what are the conversations like when you decide to pull a guy like Jordan Hancock off the field? Because he just, he just seems like he's one of your better players and really integral to what you guys do. So I, I'd imagine it's not easy to always pull him off the field. So that's a fact. No, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. But you're right, it really is personnel-based. And, um, you know, trying to get the people in, he, in there who, you know, particularly in the run game, and it's not that Jordan can't handle it because he can. He does a good, really good job in the run game. And, and I've spent times in my career where we stayed in nickel in 12, you know, because those were our dudes. But we got other guys, you know, so, we got other, so we're just trying to get the best matchups. Go center field over here, Patrick Murphy. Jim, obviously you want to come out have the perfect plan against an offense, right? But that doesn't always happen. For the last two weeks, you guys have obviously made defensive adjustments at halftime that have worked. How much do you balance what you see on film and then knowing you're going to have to make those adjustments with 
evaluating what you see in the first half versus the second half? They're like two completely different processes. You know, they really are. I mean, the craziest thing about our profession is you can work on things all week and then show up in the game and they're not there. <laughs> You're like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> so, you know, but that's our, our job is to try to create pr practice that mimics the game, you know? So that's where you really spend all your time. It's like success through scripting of, you know, okay, what plays am I going to see against what, what defense? You're trying to predict what they're going to do. And then you see what actually happens. <laughs> and then maybe something that you thought was going to work didn't work. You know, so you got to move on. You got to move on and you got to adjust. But they're completely different processes, both of them. Last week I asked you after you know, 14 points to Marshall if you were a little frustrated. You said, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Michigan State only gave up seven in that game right after a turnover. You shut them down almost completely in the second half. But the first half they moved the ball pretty consistently. What was your level of frustration then? And what, what do you think was the issue in the first half with them moving the ball? Yeah, we've started, we started slow, you know, the past couple weeks. And I, uh, I blame myself for that, right? Again, it's, it's, um, you know, making, you know, there are thousands of permutations of what can happen, right? So that's exactly like I said. It's like, hey, I'm predicting this. They did that. Okay. Well, that guy's supposed to know that. That's part of his job. But then you go back to, well, how, much, how, many, how many times did I really practice that? You know, how many times... Did I show that guy that technique versus that play or that route? You know, so the preciseness and the exactness of the preparation, I think um, it happens a lot to coaches. It's ha it happens throughout my career, you know, that like in the beginning of the game, you know, you get some unpredictable things which may not even publicly you might not notice, but, you know, kind of what you were predicting and how you did it. And then... You know, your guys always go back. You always default to your training, you know. So you have to look at those plays where we where we failed on those plays and say, you know, why? And when it comes to the game, that comes to me. You know, it's just continuing to, you know, be exact about how we're training, what we're training, what I'm showing, how predictable are we, you know, if they know, you know. If they know what you're in, they can take advantage of it. Go deep left field, Tim Holt. Jim, Lathan Ransom has become a weapon with the way he can utilize the peanut punch. Now, not all DBs can do that. Is that something that you tell certain players to try to do, or do they just have to pick that up themselves? Yeah, we'd love, we'd love for all of them to do it. You know, I think you saw, you know, two big plays last week um, that we've spent – on, on the positive side, that we've spent a whole spring and a fall camp training for those two plays, right? The, the one that Jordan ripped out and, the, and Lathan with the stealth punch. I mean, those are deliberate. Those do not happen accidentally. Those are deliberate. I think just like you said, we try to train everybody, but some guys are just better than others. You know, and Lathan Ransom is lethal with that. And I want him to keep it up. Jim, one of the advanced stat sites says you guys lead the country in uh, pressures and non-blitzes. Are you satisfied with how you guys are, are getting to the quarterback and affecting the quarterback right now? Through four never years? satisfied. Never satisfied, but um, we are, you know, they are executing what's called, though, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we just, we got to tighten up our coverage, you know, because we need that extra second because the guys are the guys are getting there, you know. So third row right here, Ralph Holler. Jim, um, you lead the nation 6.75 points allowed. And yet you hear... That's two guys who said something about leading the nation. <laughs> right. Or, 
both of you guys get out. That's the point. And yet you. It's rat poison. It's rat poison. You are hearing what's wrong with this defense. Have you ever had a defense? Who's who? Who's? I'm hearing what? What's wrong with it? Well, you're even saying like we, we could be better here. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we well, could. Have you ever been nitpicked as much as you've been here? Your defense. Is that to be expected in a place like this? My father was pretty tough. He was a Philly cop, so. <laughs> I got more than nitpicked. I got nit whacked. Yeah, so I'm used to it. I'm used to it. What would it take to be satisfied? You said it's not satisfied. Not satisfied. Uh, zero points, under 100 yards a game, four turnovers, score twice on defense, and then it'd be fine. Then I'd be satisfied. We'll hold you to it. Okay. Behind Rob, Cameron, Robinson. Jim, what did you like about the three linebackers that you just said that you put out early against Michigan State? And how do you want to see that grow or evolve, especially this weekend against uh, this one? Yeah, yeah I, I, uh, I like the fact, you know, that they, that they all can work together. You know, when you have uh, maybe two guys and a nickel, you know, you're kind of in two different rooms with the three linebackers. They're all in the same room, and they can work together. And uh, I think their understanding and processing is going very well. What we need to see better is, is tackling, you know. Our linebackers need to continue to become better tacklers, and particularly this week, knockback tacklers, right? I mean, the, the, these guys are the kings of, in this running back, two, turning a two-yard gain into a four- or five-yard gain, which then leads to second and five, which leads to third and two, you know. So we need to continue to work on our tackling and, you know, with, a, with an attitude of knocking people back. Uh, kind of a two-part here, a lot of it, because we've just heard a lot about coverage. For starters, could you evaluate your linebackers and how they've been in coverage so far? And then also, I think there's been a, a growing concern of how much off coverage you guys have been playing with the cornerbacks and trying to balance, you know, giving up some of that short stuff and just having guys who can excel at tackling versus maybe being more aggressive right. and having your corners play right. in the line of scrimmage. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the corners – off press, I mean, that's a constant thought, constant, constant adjustment. Um, again, we're, we're, we've been solid on explosive plays. So I think you can't, you can't forget that because that wins games, you know. And um, sometimes on those big, deep, like you take a guy like Caleb Downs, who, you know, we activated. Um, Saturday, and you know we're going to continue to activate him as we get into big time, uh, Big Ten competition. You see how what he looks like when he's activated. What you don't see a lot is when he's not activated. How many times they just don't throw the ball deep? You know what I mean? Because he's in the right place and on top of the routes, and they don't even take those shots. Those shots aren't taken. So it's the same thing with the corners. It's like you know, the answer to your question is: Do we need to be pressed more? Yes, we do. And we need to keep we need to keep working that working that in, but um, we got to balance it. Deep center, we've got time for two more. Deep center, Jeremy, uh, Jim, Brian, and, and Chip sort of have a luxury that Phil Parker and the defense at Iowa haven't changed in twenty some years. They have so they have a first time or a new offensive coordinator after a couple of years of being somewhat predictable offensively, and they're coming off a of bye week. How does that impact with? preparation you do and how, generally speaking how does an off week help a team prepare yeah it just gives you more time to just gives you more time to study you know I mean that's the only way I can put it, it gives you more time to study um, but in terms of what we do you know you have to go off of what you have seen from them this year and then you know, always with a new offense coordinator, you got to go back in their history and you got to look at things that they've done in the past that maybe you haven't seen yet because you're ready, so you're ready for it. But um, you really got to go mostly off of what you see this year. We'll wrap it up right here in the part, Austin. Jim, the, uh, the play that Cody made on fourth down, is that predetermined that he's going going high, jumping? Is he? Is there a read that he has there? That it, it's a call. It's a call, yeah. Is that something... You've been talking about the number of reps that guys get in those situations. Is that a? You can't rep that. No, that's <laughs> that's like when I call this, you guys do that and you jump over the top. 
You're not gonna, you're not gonna practice that. <laughs> you're right. I don't know how you practice that. Cody, go up and practice and smash your head into Lincoln. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do that. So. Thanks, coach.